Hello YouTubers, thank you for tuning in today. This is another edition of uh, Native DNA uh, where we're going to take a look at uh, world population from the Polynesian Islands. Uh, today I would like to actually look at uh, a friend of mine has donated a sample from his grandmother uh, that we had processed at the lab and uh, his grandmother is of Native Hawaiian ancestry. And so today I'd like to present those results uh, to you and discuss them with you. They're rather fascinating, so we're going to dive right on in and take a look. Uh, right, First off, we're going to uh, process the results using Pinnacle 2. This was our uh, second uh, Pinnacle Ancestry Finder that was uh, developed in 2013, um, from like January of 2013 through the mid part of 2014. So we're going to go ahead and, and run. It's a 17 STR calculator. You can see the 17 STRs right here. Uh, some of uh, the viewers out there may be familiar with this from watching our previous episodes. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and find Ancestry. So taking a look here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. Uh, taking a look, you can see that uh, Eastern Polynesians from New Zealand, this would be the Maori population from New Zealand, is at the top of the list, uh, followed by the Eastern Poly a separate population, Eastern Polynesians, uh, Cook Island and New Zealand Maori combined. Uh, going down, we can see there's an amplified population of Western Europeans, just showing that there is the presence, uh, revealing the presence of Western European ancestry in the Eastern Polynesians, um, in the Hawaiians. This is not overwhelmingly strong, but it's definitely there. I would say it's somewhere between 15 to 20 percent um, uh, European ancestry. So we're going to keep going down and you can see the Marquesas Islands. Uh, this is this is a great result right here. Basically what this is indicating is for those of you who are familiar with the ancestry of the native Hawaiian people, um, it is said that uh, uh, the Maori people uh, first settled in, in Tahiti and, and the islands thereabout around that region. And then uh, there was a, a, a split migration and one branch went to the north uh, to the Marquesas Islands and uh, further on to Hawaii. And then another group went south from Tahiti and uh, settled New Zealand in that region right in through there. So that's the reason you see Marquesas Islands. They're probably, uh, besides the New Zealand Maori, the closest living relatives to modern-day Hawaiians. And then going down you can see Rapa Nui uh, from Easter Island, Chile. This is of course, uh, Easter Island is about a thousand miles I believe roundabout west of Chile. And then you go down you can find more European mixed with Polynesian populations. So uh, the admixture of Polynesian ancestry decreases from here on down. Okay, so uh, what can we glean from this? And you can see also, if you go a little bit further down, you can see another Chilean population uh, indicating uh, more than likely what this is probably indicating is the Polynesians moving to Chile. I'm sure there were probably some that went from Chile back out um, as Thor Heyerdahl's expedition uh, proved that was very possible. No problem for the Polynesian seafarers. Uh, their navig they were master navigators uh, and, and, and even scientists had to be in order to understand um, a lot of that stuff that they did. So anyway, uh, this Chilean population, in my opinion, from what I can uh, determine from, from these results from Pinnacle uh, 2, our 17 STR calculator, is that this is probably the result of Polynesian admixture going to Chile instead of from Chile out. Um, but I could be wrong about that. It's hard to gauge that sometimes, you know. We just know that, that uh, the Chilean population was intermixed with and interacted with the uh, Eastern Polynesians and the Native Hawaiians. Okay, so going down, uh, you can see mixed with some Scotland there. We know that Cook, uh, Captain Cook, went to all throughout Polynesia uh, there and actually died uh, on the shores there uh, of Hawaii, the, some of the Hawaiian islands there. So uh, Croatia, that looks to be probably the result of maybe some Russian-like admixture, Eastern European, um, going back up through there. Uh, 
Uh, one of the more interesting results, uh, it's one of the lesser results, but it is most definitely present. Um, and actually, if we look at the gradient, it's not, it's not tremendously less because we have 1 times 10 to the 19th here, 1 times 10 to the 20th here. So just one order of magnitude less than the top match um, is Cucupa from the Baja Peninsula of, of Baja, California. Um, this is a Native American tribe here from the Baja, California. And so that's showing me that there was indeed some admixture of Native Americans with the Hawaiian people um, and, and probably with most Polynesian people. But I have always had a long, long standing thought, idea, hypothesis that um, some of the uh, Western United States tribes, even down into Mexico, um, and possibly northwestern, western South America are related to the Polynesian people, and this confirms that. It is true. So if you are part Polynesian and people have mistaken you for Native American uh, or Mexican or, or another Latin American country or North American uh, USA or Canadian tribe, there's good reason for that. And this shows that very explicitly, okay? And so going down, you can see Yavapai mixed with Basque, a mixed Yavapai, admixed Yavapai population uh, thrown in there as well. And if you go down even further, you start getting into, into Eastern Siberia, which could be the uh, East Asian contribution to the Polynesian genome. Because as we know, uh, the Polynesian people are a composite population, which means they're made up of uh, multiple continents, um, of the original continental races, and uh, mostly being East Asian, um, order of, of greatest to least, it would be East Asian, uh, Sub-Saharan African, about 20-25%, and that is actually evident down here by this African-Bolivian population that we see here, uh, admix there. Uh, European ancestry, roughly 15 to 20%, I'm not real sure on that, I have to really sit down and do some mathematics figure out the powers of 10 here, the orders of magnitude in order to calculate that, but I could do that. Um, you can see Upper Corsica, North European, uh, North Italy, and Orkney, which would be that Mediterranean influence from the explorers, right? The conquistadors and, uh, excuse me, some of the other Spanish populations. I'm not sure the order there on, on which Spanish explorers went where, but uh, it, was, it was explored by Spain and possibly Italy as well. Um, but that would that would reveal that I'm gonna move this aside and obviously Native American also so you have uh, Eastern Asian Sub-Saharan African European mostly around the Mediterranean region and maybe Northwest Europe and then Native American those are the the primary four admixtures uh, for the Polynesian people uh, you can see it's North Italy and Orkney would be and then we have uh, Russia and Orkney Volga Russia uh, Basque, which would be French, which would be in, uh, mostly a Mediterranean type feel uh, there in, in the Western Mediterranean. So yeah, that's at 17 STRs. Now what I would like to do is briefly go over the results um, run at 28 STRs. So I'll go down here that you can see um, my friend's grandmother's STR profile here in our Pinnacle 3. This is our most recent uh, 28 STR calculator for uh, short tandem repeats. Okay, so um, you can see Eastern Polynesian, as expected, would be number one. <clears throat> and then going down the list, Marquesas Islands. Uh, this is the pooled population, so the Tahuana, Hiva, Oa, and the Nuku Iva uh, populations all pooled into one, and genetic frequencies were averaged for this. Rapa Nui, <clears throat> excuse me, from Easter Island, Chile. Again, and you can see how strong the Marquesas populations are. Way up there on the list. Not even a full order of magnitude <clears throat> outside of the uh, Eastern Polynesian population that she matches uh, most closely. And then going down the list, you can see just various admixtures with Polynesian and European um, combined. Uh, in, into this and some looks like some Melanesian here which you would expect I believe there was a, a paper that came out about mm, 10 years ago or so that said that 
the majority of, popu of Polynesian populations were about 15 to 25 percent Melanesian, uh, depending on the population, of course. So yeah, this is fascinating stuff here. And as you can see, we don't have an actual um, Hawaiian, native Hawaiian population in our database. I would like to change this because I think it's, um, I'm rather surprised that no one has done a genetic study on the native Hawaiians to date. Um, and I, I, would, I would like to change this. And uh, if you would like to help contribute to making that a reality, because I could do the DNA study, I could generate the frequencies, but I would need about seven to 10 additional genetic profiles uh, run at the lab in order to, to build a frequency profile or, or averages for the Hawaiian population. So we would need about $700 to $1,000 in order to do that. If you'd like to help make that possible, no pressure, um, nothing like that. But you can donate on our website. Um, if you just go to the order area, the order page on our website, you can donate there if you're interested. But I'd like to make that possible someday. Um, I wouldn't really write a paper on it uh, as of now from where I stand on the issue. But I would like to generate popu a population so that we could run uh, people with native Hawaiian's ancestry through our calculator and it be able to return an actual native Hawaiian match. That would be really neat, I think. Um, so that's a project that I'm hopeful for sometime in the future. But anyway, uh, this is a little bit of information about the native Hawaiian uh, population. Uh, his grandmother is full-blooded native Hawaiian. So again, they're a composite population. But uh, from where that stands, this, these are the results, rather fascinating stuff. And again, thank you to my friend for allowing us to do this. This has been a fascinating study. So for all of us here at Native DNA, thank you for tuning into this episode. Uh, I've got further videos planned uh, in the near future. And as always, thank you for trusting Native DNA. And I've got uh, one more side uh, note and how, housekeeping issue to take care of. Um, I'd like to mention that uh, Facebook is currently, we're experiencing trouble with uh, folks being able to click on our link uh, through Facebook, on our Facebook page and access our website. Um, and I would like to try to get that worked out. I'm going to try to tweak some things and see if I can't get that running. But, <clears throat> excuse me, as always, our uh, web address is native-dna.com. And you can find us there, lots of goodies there, and you can ask questions to me anytime, always willing to help. So once again, um, I'm owner-operator Chris Lasakis. Thank you for listening today. Take care. Bye-bye.